Buenos dias, amigos. I'm Mr. John, and today we're going to look at what it means to keep your word. I have some very important things in my life, things that I like to do and things that I have, and I always like to make sure that I take really, really good care of these things that are important to me. Don't you? God has some really important things to him. Let's see what the Bible says. In Psalm 138, verse 2, David writes, I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. David is talking about how God's love and promises never fail. He goes on to say, for your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. God is faithful and he always keeps his promises. God's word is very important to him. God made everything and everything is his, but his word is the most important thing to him. That means that anytime God says something, he makes sure it happens. That's why we can always trust God. He is faithful. God wants us to be faithful too. God wants us to keep our word. Keeping our word means doing what we say we're gonna do. Sometimes we might not think our word is very important. When that happens, it may look like maybe something like this is happening. Maybe you're talking to your friend at school and you're really excited to get to hang out this weekend. You both make plans uh, to have a fun day of eating junk food and swimming and watching cartoons and uh, yeah, hanging out. But then when Saturday morning arrives, he doesn't show up. You call, but he doesn't answer. Later you see that he has been hanging out with someone else. That doesn't make you feel great. That's like this balloon here. Our word should be something solid that we can rest on, something others can depend on. But when your friend doesn't show up and tells you on Monday at school that he just, well, forgot. <laughs> See, your friend broke the word. Next time they say they're gonna come over and, and hang out with you, it's gonna be harder for you to trust them. Or when your mom asks to clean up your room. We've all been there, right? It's a crazy mess and I'm pretty sure there's something alive and moving around under all that stuff. You really don't want to take all day to clean it up, but you know that if you don't clean it up, you won't be able to get to play outside with your friends. At that moment, you make a decision. You decide to hide all the mess and tell your mom you cleaned it up. You start shoving things under your bed and into drawers and into your closets, and after a few minutes, your room is looking much better. You spread your blanket out nicely over the bed and you call it done. As you're heading out the front door to meet your friends, your mom asks you if you cleaned up your room and you say that you already did. And then of course you, oh. you tell her that you cleaned up your room and you run outside and you play. Okay, but when you get home, your mom is standing there with her arms crossed and knowing something's wrong, she tells you that when she went into your room to check, she was, oh, pleasantly surprised that it looked really good until she opened your closet and was buried by an avalanche of dirty clothes and old dishes and toys and stinky socks. And then she decided that you maybe, you didn't clean up all of your room and, and that you shouldn't, you shouldn't have gone. <laughs> so yeah, you broke your word. Now the next time, when you tell your mom that you did something, it's going to be harder for you to believe that, sh that you actually did it. Not to mention that you probably will be grounded or something, or maybe uh, your friend has a sweet tree house, but it really needed to be fixed up before your mom or anyone would let you go over there and play. So your friends ask you that if you would come over and help them fix it up. Uh, getting to play in the treehouse sounds really fun, and if we all work together, we can have that done really fast. But you decide and agree to tell them that you're gonna come over tomorrow and help, but then when you wake up and tomorrow comes, you really didn't feel like helping your friend out like you did yesterday. You really feel like just sitting around and doing much of Nothing or really anything else sounds better than that. So instead of going to your friend's house to help them, you stay at home and play video games. Uh, when your friend comes to see you, uh, when they ask if you were coming to help, you just say, oh, you didn't feel like it. Um, and then they just kind of really get sad. <laughs> I'm never gonna get used to that. See, now that you broke your word, your friends are going to have trouble trusting you uh, and counting on you in the future. You don't want to be the kind of people that break their word. You want to be dependable and faithful, like God. We are going 
to sometimes forget and mess up. Yeah, that's absolutely right. But when you begin to make your words something that is important to us, we will take better care of it. We will start treating it like God does. See, as Christians, we are supposed to look like Jesus. And that means what is important to him should be important to us. God always keeps his word, and so should we. I hope this illustration really helps you all understand how important our word is, and that we should always keep our word, no matter what. <laughs> that was great, because when you popped up, I felt you, and I went, and I didn't see you, and then I reached over.